Last week on the Raspberry Pi subreddit, I saw a very cool project by user HeightMe09. It's an audiovisual system that's meant to notify software developers whenever one of them commits a broken piece of code. And although this might get you a few enemies around the office, I wanted to show how to build your own. Using a Raspberry Pi Zero, a couple of two-channel relay boards, a tower light, and some Python code, we're going to build a Wi-Fi control tower light notification system. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering their PCB assembly service with a discount of 65% for their SMT fees for 1 to 20 pieces. They offer a great deal of options for your PCBs and the resulting quality of their products is great. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. For portability purposes, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 0W. It's going to be running Raspbian that we flash onto a micro SD card in a different video. I'll use a 5 volt micro USB power supply, a tower light, which is essentially just three lights each one with a positive wire and a common ground wire. As this is a 24 volt power light, I'll need to have a separate power supply. To make the wiring connection simpler, I'll use a barrel jack to screw terminal adapter. I'll also need a couple of two channel relay boards, some wires to connect the pin headers of the Pi to the relays, and a flathead and Phillips head screwdriver. The assembly process is pretty straightforward you're welcome to follow along or try it by yourself. You can find the links to all the parts either in the video description or you can go directly to my little shop on Amazon. With everything assembled, I'll use SSH to remote login to the Raspbian operating system running on the Pi. As usual, I'll create a work directory and a project directory inside of it that I'll name Python Tower Light. The first thing I'll do is create a script to test out the lights. I'll name it Test Tower Light. It'll be written in Python. And the first thing I'll need is to include the library or module that will allow me to control the pins on the Raspberry Pi that will in turn control the relays which then will turn on and off the different lights on the tower light. I'll define the three pins on the Pi that as we saw in the wiring diagram are connected to the three input pins on the relay. I'll use the chip numbering system and I'll simply have a little loop where I can initialize those pins to be outputs. I'll use the same kind of loop in order to turn them on and off. This is essentially the blink program just done for the three pins that are connected to each one of the lights. I'll remember to clean up the pins and once I'm ready, I'll open a new tab on the terminal and establish a new SSH connection. I'll use it to run the script, and if everything is wired correctly, I should see the three lights turn on and off at a rate of once per second. With that done, I'll then create a library that will allow me to control each light individually and specify the amount of time for which I want that light to be on. I'll need pretty much the same pieces of code that we had in our test script 
although in this case I'll use a Python dictionary to specify the three different pins. The main part of the library is a function that I'll name toggle tower light. As an arbitrary choice, I'll make the intervals and the color of the lights be specified as arrays. They'll be contained either in a JSON or a Python dictionary object. The function will go through the array in a loop and turn on each light in the color sequence for the amount of time specified in the intervals sequence. To test things out, I'll simply create the sequence myself. Using the range function, I'll create an array of integers and I'll use this array to create an array of time intervals that will get increasingly smaller. For the colors, I'll simply use the sequence red, yellow, green for as many times as we have time intervals. And just as a simple check, I'll make sure that the number of interval matches the number of colors. In the test part of the code, I'll call the function and clean up the pins. With that done, I'm ready to test the simple module I just created. If everything goes well, I should see the lights turn on in sequence, red, yellow, green, at increasingly faster times. Now that we have our module, we're ready to control this thing over the internet. For that, I'll create one last script that I'll name Wi-Fi Tower Light. I'll include the function that we just created and I'm going to be using the Flask module, which comes installed by default in the Raffian OS to run a web server that will allow me to run this function over Wi-Fi. As we've done in other videos, I'll specify something really simple for the top root path and when a request is sent to the control path, we'll run the function. Once again, by my arbitrary choice, I expect a sequence of data that specify the colors and the intervals for the function. I expect them to be formatted in JSON so that I can simply pass it as a Python dictionary. For now, I'll simply print the request to the terminal so that we can see it in action. Then I'll return an empty response, but you're welcome to do something more sophisticated. The last thing I'll need is to call the run method of the Flask instance, and as is typical, I'll only accept requests using the HTTP POST method. I'll go ahead and run the web server on the Raspberry Pi and open a new terminal on my laptop so that I can use a program called curl to send those requests to the server running on the Raspbian OS that's running on the Raspberry Pi. Using option D, I can specify the data that I'm going to send, which has to be formatted in JSON as I'm showing now. I'll make sure that the content type matches what the server is expecting and uses the correct method. Remembering that the server is running on port 5000 by default and the correct path that we need to send the data, I'll go ahead and give it a try. We can see that indeed the data with the correct format is printed to the terminal. So finally, we're ready to instead of printing it using the data to call the function that we defined before. So if we rerun the server and send the request again, we should see the specified sequence. The order should be red, yellow, green, and the interval should be one second. If we wanted a more complex pattern, it gets a little bit annoying specifying it directly on the curl command. So as an alternative, we can create a file with the correct formatting in order to specify the sequence. As an example, we can use a Python script to create it. I'll go ahead and create the same sequence that we tried before with the increasingly shorter time intervals. With the file created, I'll go ahead and pass it to the curl command. If everything is formatted correctly, we should see the pattern displaying in its full glory. So there you have it. Really quickly, we've used a Raspberry Pi Zero, a couple of relays and a tower light to build a notification system that will earn you the title of most annoying coworker in the office. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.